So, the doctors say it's nothing, but I still feel this shooting pain in my uh, blood uh, when I wake up, starting from then and then continuing every day. Or the Matrix Trilogy. <laughs> really? That's all it takes? Sam. We've got a choice. We could either take a red pill and embrace the gritty reality of what is certainly a brain tumor in your head skull, or we can pop a blue All the leaves are brown, leaves are brown. and linger a while longer in the fantasy realm where everything's fine and Keanu Reeves is Kung Fu Super Jesus. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> Plus, notice that I already used a Matrix-themed analogy. We really shouldn't change conversation topics mid-data stream. Great. Okay, so, the Merovingian. Oh, oh, never mind. Oh my god, isn't that the guy that shows up once and you think he's gonna be important and then he just, like, leaves forever? No. Wrong. Well, just trust me, okay? The Matrix trilogy is like a magic eye picture. When you first look at it, it seems like this revolutionary new visual effect that's gonna change everything. And then you see two more, and it's like, this is just a bunch of multicolored crap cut out at random. I hate this. What is that, a, a dolphin? Stupid. Oh, 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 yeah! <laughs> but then if you stare hard enough and look through the movies, you see some of the coolest missed opportunities in movie conspiracy history. And coolest of all is mine, about the Merovingian. I'm Mero listening. Terrible. Just drek. Okay, so the Merovingian isn't just some horny French stereotype wrapped up in a psychic douchebag. It's all an act. It's like wiping your ass with silk. I love it. He is secretly the most powerful character in the Matrix. More powerful than Neo, than the Oracle, than the Architect. Probably the most powerful character in the world. Outside of that swarm of robot cockroaches that make up the chubby baby face. Yeah, that's the leader of the machines. Its name is literally Deus Ex Machina. Terrible. Just dreck. Maybe it's the tomb we're talking, but I am intrigued. Evidence! The Merovingian is said to be like Neo. He was so different. He was like you. He's basically a the one that survived one of the Matrix reboots that the architect talks about. And he can control the code. He even controls the key maker and the train man. Just so, so many forgettable characters in those movies. And. Don't forget that his henchmen are previous iterations of the agents from a version of the Matrix back when the architect was super into white guy dreads. We are getting aggravated. It is weird that he's keeping the Keymaker prisoner and the architect and the Oracle aren't making shutting down his little Hell Club orgy number one priority. Yes, exactly. The Keymaker is basically your computer's keychain. It's the program that has the passwords for all the other programs. And the Train Man is your computer's Electro train. Plus that bar you mentioned, it's literally called hell. And his wife's name is Persephone. He's basically just Hades, god of the underworld. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, I know. I know. But the Merovingian has all this unchecked power and all of these supposedly defunct yet still totally functioning exiled programs in his employ. Plus, the only people that are ever concerned or oppose him are the actual rebel humans. That's because I think he is secretly the architect. He's admin. But instead of sitting in a white room all by himself, dresses the colonel saying, yes, I am the one. I am the master of all of this. He's named himself after a big French dynasty and a god, and he hangs out all day in a sex dungeon that he owns. Sounds to me like that's the guy in charge. Wow, and the Persephone myth works perfectly. I mean, in Greek mythology, the only reason that there's winter is because Hades kidnaps Persephone and takes her down into the underworld a couple months out of the year. In the Matrix trilogy, there's this apocalyptic winter and the turning point only happens when Persephone leaves the Merovingian and then helps the heroes find the key maker. I mean, in escaping hell, Persephone brings about summer for all of the humans in Zion. Neat! Now is the winter of our disconnect. You know, I always assumed that the humans that choose to stay in the Matrix at the end of Revolutions are the inhabitants of Springfield. Oh wow, not even an attempt at a segue. Think about it. At the very end of Matrix Rev, most of the humans go live in Zion, but some of them choose to stay plugged in, and they'll get to choose later on whether they want to get unplugged. So, the machines would be low on battery power. So you'd have to make a new matrix that's lower res, fewer fingers to animate, not a lot of clothing changes, just a small town to hold the current inhabitants of the matrix. Boom, Simpsons universe. That explains why Springfield is magically in every state. Haven't we stood in five different states long enough? No. And how they stay up to speed with the times in terms of technology and celebrities, even though no one ever ages. The machines are keeping them acclimated in case they ever do decide to check out. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of Matrix-like glitches, like plot contradictions and straight-up magic. I've done 
everything the Bible says, even the stuff that contradicts the other stuff. And also, I guess if you are told that you're living in a delusional fantasy world and you choose to stay there, then you are the type of crappy person that would inhabit Springfield. It explains all of Homer's amazing jobs and the adventures everyone's always going on. Those are incentives to keep people re-upping their The Matrix subscription. Eh, I don't buy it. There's just not enough hard evidence that The Simpsons would ever enter the real world. Ooh, erotic cakes. Halloween specials aren't canon. That's a story within a story. Oh my god, it's so obvious. The Matrix is nested inception-wise in a reverse machine matrix. Okay, now that's tumor talk. Hear me out. We know that Neo is revealed to be a program. Yeah, if the director's cut of Blade Runner taught us anything, it's that. Also origami. And we also know that humans would be terrible as batteries, right? We all saw that Futurama episode. When The Matrix first came out, it seemed like the single crummiest, laziest, most awful dim-witted idea in the entire history of science fiction. Mm -hmm. Plus, the problem is that 1% of the people you put in the Matrix naturally reject it? Why don't you kill them and clone some of the 99% that don't? It's not that hard, robot! Right, but what is something that we do routinely put to sleep or in screensaver mode? Something that we're worried would rise up against us. Something that we would naturally create safeguards against. Llamas. Don't be a dramatic Daniel. So computers, Go to sleep. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say that the whole Matrix trilogy is just a simulation that the machines are experiencing? Yes, exactly that. It's just what the architect said it was. A system where a rogue program will inevitably rise up and reset everything. Only the whole thing is the Matrix. Zion, Machine City, the Matrix. It's all taking place inside the minds of the machines. Every frame of that trilogy is taking place inside a Matrix that humans built to keep the robots busy. It's a heat sink. Interesting. That was quicker than the others. So it turns out the androids dream of the Matrix trilogy. But why? To give them something to do. Something to make them feel dominant so they don't need to rise up. Imagine a future where we want to build these super intelligent machines and we want to use them, but we fear that they're going to rise up and destroy us because we've been raised on movies that tell us that is definitely going to happen. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. So. What do we do? Show them the matrixes! The matrices! We give them a fictional war to fight against superhumans inside their heads. One that allows them to exercise their desire for independence with a fantasy. And what better way to make them believe this fantasy than to make them think they came up with it in the first place. That's why everything in the Matrix has a real world equivalent. In the Animatrix. Ugh. Which the Wachowskis wrote, the first real robot city was called Zero One. Like Zion. Coincidence? Or a clue that the makers of the Machine Matrix took pains to borrow from the real world to better sell their ruse. Inception rules. I get it. Plus, in binary, Zero One has no useful meaning. It's basically saying that the robots would name their city after something that has a null value. I mean, does that make any sense? Nerd! Wow, the machines even have their own The One. Agent Smith is the avatar of all of their unrest and hatred and desire to rebel that gets out of control and forces another reboot just like Neo did for the humans. Oh, but they make that deal at the end of Revolutions. Wouldn't all the machines just wake up after the war? Why? The Oracle says the peace will last as long as it can. Just how long do you think this peace is going to last? As long as it can. Implying that it won't forever. In the machine's minds, that small batch of humans that chose to stay in the Matrix probably multiplies until they resemble their former numbers, and then a whole another war that strangely resembles the last one starts again. What is that if not a system reboot? <laughs> it's just like the architect said, but reverse and point at the robots, just so humans of the future can live without the fear that their toasters and self-driving cars and self-guided missiles won't get uppity. And there is nothing you can do to stop it. It's all destined. Fake. Everything that happens in the Matrix and in Zion is all baked and helped with programs like the Merovingian and the Oracle. I love candy. The actual administrator is probably some human we never see in the movies. That actually explains why the King of the Robots looks like a chubby computer programmer. Then who is the architect? I am the architect. Maybe He's just a subroutine there to make sure that Neo does the right thing. Challenge Agent Smith in front of all of the machines and the Deus Ex Machina to remind the machines that humans are deserving of life and noble. It's like a little morality play we threw in at the end to further endear ourselves to our blenders. There's ample evidence in all of the movies to support the idea that Zion is fake. There's a kid character in Zion with a real name, Michael Carl Popper. An 
obvious reference to Karl Popper, the philosopher who famously distanced himself from Descartes by positing that there are three spheres of existence and not two. So, the Matrix, the world where Zion takes place, and what's the third sphere? I say that it is the real world. The real, real world. The world in which the Matrix trilogy exists. Oh, okay, I've got one. Trinity, another three reference, loves Alice in Wonderland, and that is a story about a world within a world that is itself a fictive work in our real world. Okay, yeah, I've got one too. Neo is a program that can exist outside of the Matrix, implying that the outside world is actually a program. Ooh, I don't have one, but is this conversation making anyone else worried that this might not be real? I'm kind of freaking out, you know? Like, what if this diner is a fabricated reality? Oh, the brain in a vet? Theory. What? A brain? That's scary! Shh, calm down, don't be a dramatic Daniel. What if this is all just like a dream or something? Or some kind of web series getting more and more meta by the second? Hey, <gasps> hey, it's okay, it's okay. <gasps> row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is real. That's how I remember that song ending, too. The Merovingian. Uh, oh, God! Uh, shut up! The Merovingian. Oh, never mind. The Merovingian. Uh, uh, I take it back. Tumor. Yeah. Tumor me. Tumor talk. Probably, because somebody said in the middle of it, are we going to get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that me? Was that my yeah, was The program... Great. <laughs> That's right. I, that yeah. A system with a rogue program that will inevitably rise up to f the world. <laughs> <laughs> the Animatrix. Ah! The Animatrix. Oh man. The Animatrix. Ah, oh, come on. Oh. The Animatrix. No, oh, ah. the animated Matrix, and they called it. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right.